All right, so it's been about six to seven months since the DJI Mini 4 Pro has been released. And in this video, I just wanna give you guys five main reasons why I've been carrying this drone with me pretty much daily, whether I'm going on a work trip, as well as, of course, going on family vacations. This thing is always in my bag and pretty much as a daily carry, it's normally in my bag or in my car. Now in this video, I'm not gonna go through every single specification of this drone. I have a full review video. If you guys wanna see that one, it'll be listed above as well as down below in the video description. In those videos, I do have a bunch of pros and cons of this drone, as well as a lot of other comparison videos, comparing this one to other minis, as well as the Air 3. But as I've been traveling recently for work, as well as with my family, I do wanna talk about five main things or reasons why I feel like the Mini 4 Pro is something you might want to have in your bag. Now, of course, very first reason we will talk about why it's pretty much been with me is this right here, the size and weight. Now, whether you are carrying around the Mini 4 Pro or the Mini 3 or some of the other Mini lineup, they are all under that 249 gram mark, which is really key, especially if you travel to places that have a lot more restrictions. Most of the places that have restrictions are based on drones above 250 grams, Luckily enough, the Mini 4 Pro, if you use the smaller battery, it does sit under 250 grams, sits around 248, 249 grams. Now for me, this was really key because I also traveled to Mexico and did some flights over there. And having to bring a drone just through customs in general is always kind of scary. So the smaller you can keep your drone and your footprint in your bag, makes it a little bit easier. If I were to bring something like bigger, like a Mavic 3 or something like that, it just definitely would bring and attract a lot more attention. So if you are traveling and you wanna stay you know, as low profile or under the radar as profile, traveling with a small mini drone makes things a lot easier. For me, when I carry my backpacks, I like to keep a lot of my gear just as a carry-on in my bag. So I'm gonna be carrying around a lot of lenses, a lot of a couple of other camera bodies, action cameras, things like that. So if I can keep a drone small to free up some room, that's what I normally aim at doing. Next feature I really like about the Mini 4 Pro, and this I would say helps if you're doing something a little bit more on the professional end. This camera right here has 10-bit D-Log-M. I brought the Mini 4 Pro with me on a couple corporate gigs, and I could have brought the Air 3, but again, I wanted to keep my gear as light as possible. And for the most part, the aerials that I know I'm gonna be shooting for this gig are really more just establishing shot types of video. So while I would normally like to carry around the Air 3 or a Mavic 3 Pro, if I know I'm gonna be shooting a lot more content, aerial content that is, that will be used. A lot of the stuff I do with my drone for some of my corporate gigs are really minimal, which means I'm just really out there trying to get a couple establishing shots of an area. And almost all the time I'm shooting, it's gonna be in nice bright daylight. So something like the Mini 4 Pro with this camera and the ability to have 10-bit D-Log-M, so if I wanna do some post-processing, some color grading later on, you do have that flexibility with this drone. Now, of course, if the job I was doing required a lot more aerial footage that we are gonna be using to tell a specific story or for that project, and I know I'm gonna need a lot higher quality video because it'll be more aerial focused, or if I know I'm gonna be shooting in a lot more lower light, sunrise, sundown types of shots, I will then bring something like the Air 3 or this right here, the Mavic 3 Pro. And another big plus on that 10-bit D-Log is that it is shooting 4K up to 60 frames a second. So if I do need to slow down some of that footage, I'm able to do that and still maintain that 4K quality. Next huge benefit we'll talk about on the Mini 4 Pro is these right here. We have omnidirectional, 360 omnidirectional sensing all the way around the drone with the fisheye cameras here on the front as well as the fisheye cameras here on the front, kind of pointed backwards. Then you also have some sensors here at the very bottom. Now, normally when I go out flying, I don't really depend too much on having sensors because a lot of times I will be out in an open area. So of course, I'm not, if I'm out in an open area, I'm not too worried about running into anything. However, there's been a couple gigs where I've had to go out there more in a dense environment, a lot of buildings around. So I'm gonna be flying through a park, but there's still gonna be some high rises around. Having the peace of mind that there is obstacle avoidance on this small drone, it definitely makes it a little bit easier having that safety net to push some of your shots a little bit more than you normally would if you didn't have any of those types of sensors. Also, another reason why the omnidirectional is really good is that if you ever had to go back and to return to home, you can then trigger those sensors to turn on. So if it did have to come back home 
and there was something in the way of the drone and it had to maneuver around it, it's able to see that as well as move around those objects in an emergency scenario. Now, speaking of flying around objects and buildings where you know you just might have a little bit of issues, the one thing I do like about the Mini 4 Pro is this right here, the bumped up transmission. That reception between the remote control and the drone is extremely good, especially with this one right here, the new RC2. I will know if I'm a drone, whether it's a few hundred feet away to a couple thousand feet away, but knowing it could go miles and miles away, line of sight, just gives you, again, another thing that's more peace of mind when you're out there flying, knowing if, if I am just gonna fly a thousand feet away, that reliability, that transmission should be nice and strong between the remote and the drone. And finally, my favorite feature as far as the Mini 4 being such a good travel drone is the battery life. The one thing I really like about the Mini drones, whether it's the Mini 4 Pro, the Mini 3 Pro, is that they do have a couple different options in batteries, a lower capacity, lighter battery that keeps you under that 250 gram mark, as well as give you an option to get a heavier battery, higher capacity one, which can take your flights all the way up to about 40 to 45 minutes. I find that flight time to be super important because if you are, again, traveling as light as possible, knowing that you only have to carry one, possibly two batteries in your bag makes it a lot easier because these batteries right here, especially the larger capacity ones, having 35, 40, 45 minutes of flight time is a long time up in the air. Now, while I know I don't fly a full battery just to do one shoot, it's nice to have that option. There's sometimes you're out there, you're waiting for clouds to go by, you're waiting for a subject to come into frame. Having that additional battery life, super important, whether it's a corporate gig or just a personal one, sometimes you do have to have the drone sitting, waiting for something to happen. So that extended battery is a huge plus on the Mini 4 Pro. And there it is guys, my top five reasons of why I've been flying the Mini 4 Pro, why it's been working for me, whether it's just on family vacations or on some of these smaller corporate gigs. It is just so easy to keep something like this in your bag at all times. Now, of course, there's a ton of other reasons why this drone is really good, whether it's gonna be all of the intelligent flight modes, the active track, vertical shooting, night shots, and a bunch of other reasons. Like I said, I have a full video going through all of those other features. I'll put those above as well as down below. And if you have the Mini 4 Pro or something similar, like Mini 3, Mini 3 Pro, and you also use it as your pretty much all around drone, let me know in the comments section what are those couple features or top features that you really like about these drones. If you guys are still on the fence between the Mini 4 Pro or something smaller, like Mini 2, Mini 3, or you wanted to jump up to the Air 3 or Mavic 3 Pro, make sure you guys check out a bunch of my videos. Those will be listed down below, full comparisons of all these types of drones. As always, if you guys got some value from this one, a big like would be much appreciated. This is Ultra Sasio with FlightPath.com. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.